As we continue to highlight amazing stories from all around the country, tonight we have one right here in our own backyard. The first civil rights sit-in led by high school students happened right here 63 years ago tomorrow. WXI 12's Maria DeBone has the story of these 26 Braves high schoolers, one of whom has a connection to one of our WXI 12 photographers. On February 1st, 1960, four North Carolina A&T State University students sat down at a whites only lunch counter here, not knowing they'd spark civil rights movements all over the country and inspire high school students just a city over to do the exact same thing. Fear was definitely there, but the high schoolers were determined to take a stand against racism and segregation and asked their local reverend for advice, who said they had to practice beforehand. You had to be able to sit and allow people to call you names, to spit on you, to throw water on you. You had to be prepared for the very worst and not react. And so they practiced it. And on February 11th, 1960, 26 students at William Penn High School, now known as Penn Griffin School for the Arts in High Point, walked into the Woolworth store in High Point and sat at the White's only lunch counter. And one of those 26 was 17 year old Rufus Newland. There's daddy. Yeah, Rufus Newland. He died 10 years ago, but his daughters and grandson, WXII photographer Xander Acevedo, remembers him telling the story. His mother, my grandmother, was terrified because there was a threat that you would be lynched or, you know, persecuted in some sort of way physically. She was terrified. She begged my dad not to do it, but her father said, no, he needs to do this. So Rufus and the 25 others sat at the lunch counter while people screamed at them. And they had, these are the books they had because um, the Reverend told them to bring their homework. Right. They had a responsibility to keep up with school, even though they were doing something major. After all the hype and all the nerves, when it was all over, he said the, the most surreal part is was walking out of Woolworths and waiting for someone to throw something or waiting for someone to spit, and no one did it. They just watched the kids and they let them go. And, and they all breathed like, okay, we can do this. Afterwards, they continued to do more sit-ins and fought to integrate the buses, movie theaters, and other places. I'm just so proud of him and um, all the people that participated. Um, they just really led the way and made it easier for us to do what we do now. And now the 26 students are remembered for their bravery and determination. Penn Griffin School for the Arts has a mural dedicated to them. They teach the historical significance of it, and every year they put on a performance. I cannot imagine their bravery, and I am just so proud to go to a school that honors this and where that history is a part of our history. Yeah, and I'm just happy that we're able to keep on doing this and showcase not only our current students' abilities to perform, but honoring our past students' ability to fight. Rufus Kenneth Newland. And Rufus's daughters say if he were here today, he'd say to keep fighting, keep working together, keep loving people enough to try to get through the differences and try to heal as a community so we can all move forward. There's always going to be another battle to fight, but if we do it together and we keep love first, we'll be, we'll be okay. In High Point, Maria DeBone, WXII 12 News.